Hi right, guys, Seth from Fortress Locksmiths here. Um, I had a pretty shit week. I'm a van robbed, so I've had to order a lot of new decoders and tools, which unfortunately they took. So I thought I'd take this time to give a tutorial on the new GJ Locks Fortress Strong Bolt and Yale decoder. Now, I had the old decoder, which used the uh, printout charts uh, and a different makeup key. So I'll just show you what comes inside the kit if I can do. So the first thing is it's different. Obviously we have metal reader charts, left and right, depending on which way the lock's mounted. And also one for the strong bolts and yale left and right. And if you notice that the strong bolt and yale have eight key heights where uh, lever heights and left uh, left fortress only has seven so that's the first difference second one is the makeup key pins the old one uh was a tool uh, a little bit similar to this where you slid them on whereas this one uh if you can see it's been milled out and basically you undo this retaining pin and you drop the pins in as you need them uh, it's a little bit fiddly to get used to at first but once you do it's actually a better system because uh, the old system if you got the um, the readings wrong by say one you'd have to physically take them all out and then put them back together again whereas this one obviously because they drop in from the top you can just undo that and pull out the one that you don't want and exchange it for a different one so yeah I like that new addition. Uh, also, you've got a little laminated chart with a dry white marker. It might not seem a lot. Um, but if you're like me, and if you're at a job, and you're second-guessing yourself what you thought the lever height was, you just um, sellotape this to the door and write down uh, possible permutations, what you think the uh, lever readings are. Uh, so we've got left and right these are like um guides for the reader wires to sit in uh so you got these these are for uh, right mounted and these are for left mounted and basically what happens is you put that into the lock it goes up against and touches the belly of the levers uh and with this weight which is very weighty <laughs> for want of a better word more weighty than the other one uh, this will keep it in place so those are the main differences um, you do have to make some slight adjustments yourself and I'll show you this once we uh, set the lock up in the vise um, I mean it, it does work straight out of the box but if you want to calibrate it yourself you can do uh, also these um, guide keys for want of a better word if you if you notice i've had to uh just take the edges off slightly uh it doesn't matter so much as in, in a fortress uh but when you try and push these into a union strong bolt or the yale uh you, you'll struggle putting them in so just literally just just shave a little bit off uh work it in and out and yeah eventually you'll get there anyway enough waffling on we're going to set up a lock up in the vice and actually this is a lock that i have legit just done today um and you're going to see why this kit is so good because they had the key uh, and for some reason it just stopped working and you're going to see why in a second but again this is why the decoder also helps you problem solve but i'll stop waffling now we'll set the lock up and i'll show you what i mean Right, so guys, so this is the lock that I came across today, and as you can see, it's practically brand new. Yeah, still got all the stickers on, absolutely no wear at all on it. You know, it looks in good working order. Uh, I got the phone call saying that the key had suddenly stopped working and they'd been struggling to lock it for a while, and I think you can guess why straight away. I mean, Look at that key cutting, that is absolutely terrible. 
rotten and I've seen anything like that. So uh, when I got there, the lock was mounted on the left hand side as it is here. So if you look at the bit in on the key, you can see, I mean, look at the step there. That's almost two lever widths. And it's just so off kilter. I mean, it's absolutely terrible, that, isn't it? So anyway, into the lock. I mean, it's for some reason, it's really stiff turning the lock. But it will not open the lock. Obviously, it's not ugh, lined up properly. Although it does. We can just do this. It does. He says. Or it did unlock from the other side, but now it's decided not to. Anyway, that's irrelevant because we're here to talk about the decoder. So, I've got there, I've seen that key. I know I could have just made up a makeup key and opened the lock, but I wanted to test out the new kit to see how accurate it is. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, you know, without further ado, let's get on with it. So, Left mounted lock, we've got our left mounted key guide there, as you can see it's got a cut out for the wire to sit on and the wire to sit in there. So first thing we do is we get our left wire, so as you can see that's going to curl round and it's going to touch the back of the levers. So let's just set that up now, just get it inside the lock. Just a little bit of fanning about, there we go, and now it's hooked on, can you see that? Hooked on nicely, okay? Now, just make sure you can go in and out, touch each lever, there we go. So, next thing we do is we put our weight in, so actually take the weight of it, because it is quite heavy, it is quite heavy. Put it in, screw it in a few times, let it sit, okay? And that's the principle of it. Now, if there's any damaged levers in the lock, this is an ideal tool. Say one of the springs is broken on the lever and it's absolutely floppy. If you put this on that lever, it's just going to go right up and you know that's a damaged lever. So, as well as being a decoder, it will actually help you problem solve inside the lock. So, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Now, so we've got the uh, the reader inside the thing and this is what I like about the new improved version uh, you can leave it sat there and it's not going to go anywhere because of this little handy guide uh, yeah it stabilizes it it's beautiful so anyway what we do is we get our little charts pen and we're going to decode it front to back so bring it all the way to the front and can you see that there, how it's sat? In fact, what I'm going to do is going to turn it slightly. It's going to be a bit awkward for me, so you can see. There we go. See, at that angle to you, it looks like a 7, but it's actually a 6 where I'm sat. Yeah? So, 6... Now, we know that's a really low lever, so the chance so the next one's going to be a higher one. Uh, so we've got to be careful of it pinging. Ping. See that there? This is what you do have to be careful of, because the weight is so heavy. If you're going from a low lever to a high lift lever, it has a tendency to ping and bounce, so you just need to be careful and take your time. So let's go. There we go, I think you can see there that that's clear as day at two. So we have six, two. Move it across one. Pink. So we, we've clicked up. Don't even need to put the reader on that because we know that's a one if that was a two. And then we also know that lever five is going to be a one. This, this is what I like about these charts. One, two, three and four. It's, it's impossible to get wrong. Uh, sometimes you might have a bit of confusion between 5, 6 and 7 because they're so close. Can you see that? Very, very close. Uh, so if your eye level's not quite bang on or whatever, you might get them wrong by one. But you'll see later on in this video, it doesn't matter. Okay? 
Right, so, so far we have got six, two, one, blank one. So all we need to do is find out lever number four. As you can see, I'm pushing against. We know that's going to be lower than a one. So we just turn, click, hold it in position. Hopefully you can see this. There we are. My eyes. It's bang on a four. It might be slightly different for you on camera. So there we go. Six, two, one, four, one. Okay. And that's how easy and quick you can do it. Obviously me waffling on doesn't help. So six, two, one, four, one. If any of them readings were wrong, say like number six could possibly be a number seven. We'd go seven, two, one, four, one. But I'm absolutely confident. Well, obviously I know because I've decoded a lot before at the door. But if that didn't work, we'd go to seven, two, one, four, one. Okay, right. So I'll just take this tool out and then we'll set up the makeup key. Right, so this is the makeup key. So we unscrew, take that out, make sure the logo is upside down because that's the way we're going to load them in because it's got a little cavity for them to sit in. So let's load it up. What did we say? Six. So I get a number six. As you can see, it's been milled perfectly. I'm uh, going to drop the six in. And so just drop it in like that. So let's just build this up real quick. So six two one four ah very fiddly but that's what you want nice and tight fit so ooh, so we've got six two one four one uh what you can do then instead of making up the rest of the key you can just put this little block spacer in so we're going to do that so come on you little fucker get in there we are we've got the block spacer in as you can see which is going to engage with the curtain uh Put our pin in make sure you push down on all these pins to make sure they're all sat level otherwise you'll have trouble getting it into the keyway tighten it up and there you go there's your key ready six two one four one so let's just try that on oh stiff. there we go straight away six two one four one locks open for some reason it don't want to there we go, open back up. Right, but that's not the end of the video because let me let you into a little secret. When I decoded this at the door, I got this reading 72141. So let's just change this six. So this is the beauty of the system as well. So you, instead of taking it all apart, we're just going to take the six out. There we go, as so. Took the six out. And we're going to replace it with a seven. Okay. So there we go. I've put a seven in now instead of the six. So let's just tighten that up. Let's see if we can do it again, right? So this isn't the correct code. This is seven, two, one, four, one. Let's see if we can get it to work. See that? And it is 100% a 6. I'll take the lock apart and show you. That lever, the first lever, is a 6. But we can get number 7 to work as well. And now I can't lock it. It doesn't matter because we've got the door open. So basically, if you've got low lift levers, say 6, 7, or maybe even a 5, and if you get that reading wrong, but you go lower, in effect, if you've got anything else right, you will still be able to open the lock just by giving it a little rev. So, that is absolutely brilliant. Right guys, I've showed you on the era fortress. Let's get a strong bolt and a Yale loaded up and show you how it opens with them. Right guys, so as promised, we're going to uh, use the same kit now to decode 
uh, Union Strong Bolt, pretty common locks. So again, I'm trying to do this so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, left mounted wiring, get your key in if you notice it's a little bit stiffer but we'll get it in eventually. There we go, hook it on. Uh, a few tightens, let it do what it's doing. Okay, yeah, you can see that angle a bit better, can't you? Right, so, first things first again, drag it out all the way towards you, and then so you're on position one. Now, what I have noticed is if you calibrate the reader wire to the fortress, it I mean, you do get the readings, but it is slightly off on the strong bolt. But once you learn what you're looking for, let me just... Can you see that there? <laughs> Not really. One second. Try and move this around so you can actually see what's going on. There we go. So that's on a five, if you can see that. So lever one is a five. Write that down. Excuse my shit, I'm writing. Move it to the next one. Click. There we go. So lever number two is going to be, you can see that, four. Lever number three is going to be a... Ah, now this is the thing. Did you see that? Clicked it forward, it's not moved. So we don't need to read it again because we know that's a number four. This makes like, reading this lock even easier because if number three is a four, number five is a four, but we'll check that in a second. Right, so we've got five, four, four. Let's see what lever number four is. Click. Put this so you can see. Bang on three. And last but not least, lever number five should be a four. So let's just put that there. I'm trying to do this so you can see it as well. There we go. Is a four. So there we go. So call to the lock. Five, four, four, three, four. So we're just going to whip this out and make up the makeup key. Right, just to save time, I've made up the makeup key. So as you can see, one second, there we are. Five, four, four, three, four, and obviously we've put the blocker in. Uh, straight into the lock, like a glove. Right, no more messing about. Leave that exactly where it is, and we're gonna throw a yell in. So, while we're on camera, get that out. Uh, dig out a yell. Ah, now then. If you can see, this is a Yale that's had to get drilled before. I can't remember why I had to drill it, but I did. Uh, even though it's non-British standard, it'll still read it the same because the British stand variant of this basically just means it's got a hard plate running there, and that's it. So let's get this in that device. Can you see that there? Let's just tilt it a little bit. There we go. And you can tell these Yales, because a bit like the uh, strong bolt, they've got like a rounded edge. Uh, find these everywhere because they get the sold in B&Q and Screwfix so generally if someone's other than a locksmith replacing the locks this is what they're going to use let's go down to B&Q ask for a British standard lock there you go they're going to give you a Yale so same thing again if you notice oh actually I've shaved that one down enough so in with the reader wire in sit it on I've actually not decoded this lock yet, so let's see what we get. Right, so I've wiped that clean, right. All the way to the back, well, towards us, sorry. Let's see what we're getting. So I'm trying to do this on camera at the same time, because I've legit not decoded this yet. So let's have a go. Oh, well, that's an easy one, isn't it, to see? It's a number one. So I'll leave a number one's a one. Leaving number two, obviously, unless it's a one, it's going to have to drag down a bit. Click. 
Let's see if I can do this without jumping it off. I don't know if it wants to look under my eyesight. I want uh, is a number four. Uh, one four. Let's see what number three is. Oh, nice click. See how quickly it jumps off. Again, that's a one. Hard to mistake them. That's why I love ones. So, that's even better. So if lever three is a one, which we know it is, that means lever five is a one, so we're not going to have to read that either. Uh, and then last but not least, one second. Hmm, maybe I, I acted too quickly. Let's just double check that a minute. That's too quickly. Hey, lever one's definitely a one. Lever two. Uh -huh. One second. One. I can try and do this for the camera as well. So it's getting in the way of my eyeline. It is a four. Stop that clicking off. Ah, that was the problem. I jumped the gun. I said lever three was a one. It's actually a two, I think. So you can see I've not decoded this lot before. So you always like to check your check your uh, readings a few times before you commit to making a key. So what have we got there? So we've got one, four, two, dash two. And then what made me check them again is that when I pushed on to lever four, see it clicked up again. So we know that lever four is a one. Okay. So final reading is one, four, two, one, two. And this is the first time I've tried decoding this. Because to be honest, it's the only Yale I've got in the house. So let's make up the makeup key and see if it works. Right guys, so I've built up the key as you can see, so it's one, four, two, one, two. That's the code we had. Uh, just so you know there's no skullduggery involved. You can see the pins missing. Uh, right, let's give this a whirl. So oh, here we go. Nope, we've got something wrong. We shall give it another read. As you can see, you can tell this is the first time I've recorded it, but no worries, this is what happens when you're out on the job, so all these things you have to get past. Right guys, as you've seen, the last key didn't work, but I had a bit of logical thinking, and this is part of being a locksmith, just problem solving. Instead of decoding the full lock again, what I've done is wrote 24212, because if you remember, uh, when I was decoding it first, I mistaked the twos for ones, so I originally thought that was a one, so it's a two. Obviously, I've put the makeup key and uh, works like a glove. So, there we go. You know, so don't be alarmed if you don't get it first time. Bum, bum, bum. You will get it. Just try a few different permutations. Uh, what I will say before I finally leave is. What I would recommend and what I'm going to do is make sure you carry a Yale, a Fortress and a Strong Bolt in the van. Uh, and if you've got levers from other locks, what I personally would do is put a lever 5, 6, 7 and a 1. Have them in the van uh, and if you need to recalibrate it, say you go through a job and you're like, Canel, I can't decode this lock, go back to your uh, van and just use the tool on a lock that you know the code for, that's stepped up. So, in fact, go from like 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, something like that. So you can see it jumping each time and making sure it's reading right. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the long waffling video. But again, it's an ideal and an essential part of kit. So you're basically getting a kit that will open three different locks for the price of one. Uh, more if you consider that it'll open non-British standard, British standard. It'll open Fortress, it'll open Strong Bolts, 
uh, but it'll open the uh, non-British standard as well, obviously, because it's the same as the Elks, the ones without the hyperlink. So, yeah, ideal bit of kit, guys. Enjoy watching. Keep safe.